Standard of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. Another adventure of George Valentine. Personal notice, danger is my stock and trade. If you need confidential help with anything you can't tackle alone, you've got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Dear Mr. Valentine, no doubt you have heard of me. My name is on circus billboards all over the city. Martha Dvorak, the most glamorous trapeze artist in the world. My work requires nerves of steel, but instead I'm shaking like a jellyfish. I've great fear, fear for my life, and cannot go to the police. Do not trouble to answer this. I will not take no for an answer. Take no for an answer. I may even be in your office before you receive this letter. Oh? So be sure to expect me. Hmm. Sign Martha Dvorak. Well, the young lady on the flying trapeze has a quaint way of setting up her words. And have you seen those posters, George? I'll bet there isn't a male in the audience who doesn't sit there wishing Martha would fall into his lap. That's a very charming thought. But I wish she was more specific about this great fear for her life. Well, I'm giving odds there's a rejected suitor involved. Oh, come on, woman. Stop acting like a woman. If you read the tabloids, darling, you'd know Martha's left quite a trail of broken heart. A femme fatale, huh? Mm-hmm. Very interesting. I am Martha Devorah. Ooh. If you are Mr. Valentine, please ask this young lady to leave. We want to be alone. Oh, now look, Mr. Vorak, this is Miss Brooks, my assistant. You have no objection to being alone with me. Besides, that is the only way I will discuss this business. Oh, honest, Mr. Vorak, I'm over 21, if that's what you're worried about. Well, Mr. Valentine. Uh, I am Scray, Brooksy. Huh? Hmm. Well, now, Mr. Vorak, what can I do for you? Sir? You can call me Martha. Oh, how nice. Martha? Well? From now on, until the death-defying Dvorak leaves here, you must be with me at my side all the time. Oh, now, wait a minute. That's a tall order, Martha. Here. Read this note. Huh? Get $5,000 in small bills and wait for further instructions. You will either pay or meet with a bad accident. Don't take this to the police. You are being watched. Well, that's certainly to the point. So you see, I'm helpless, George. I'm like a little girl in a bad dream. Yeah. And as I get it, you want me to act as your bodyguard. Yes. You will bodyguard me every minute. Oh, uh, look, why don't you stick close to your family, the other death-defined of Orax? They wouldn't let anything happen to you. My family. They're not my family at all. Oh, well, live and learn. It just looks good on the circus posters. The three others. Sometimes I think they hate me. Or oh, they're jealous. They know the people come to see me and not them. I see what you mean. I do not even stay at the same hotel with them. I've rented a little house up in the canyon. Well, look, you know, this may turn out to be just a crank note. The words are all cut out of magazines and newspapers. Somebody wishes to see me die, crushed, defeated. You would not let that happen to me, would you, George? Well, now, look. You will bodyguard me. I will be so grateful. Many dollars, grateful. Oh, well, okay, it's a deal. You've convinced me. Oh, that is wonderful. I think I will kiss you. Huh? No, I will not even think. I will kiss you. Oh, no. Wait a minute, Marty. You... Oh, please, Marty. I'd... I'd rather have you as a friend. Oh, you are cute, George. Always you joke. Mm, yeah. Now, what are your plans for the day? I have a rehearsal right now at the circus. Will you meet me at the matinee? Yeah, I'll be seeing you. Come early so you can see my act. Oops, sorry. Of course, you were not listening at the door. Oh, of course I was. In fact, I was peeking through the keyhole. Really? Au revoir, George. Yes, so long. Well, Casanova? Hmm? Oh, that kiss. Well, you know, Brooksy, these artists, so impulsive. Nice fight you put up. George. Oh, now, Angel, it's all business. Well, if you think I'm going to let you traipse around with that, that high-flying uh, she-wolf, uh, temper, temper, I'll temper, be temper. on your heels every minute. Oh, now, Brooksy, you can't do that. Oh, can't I? From now on, I'll be known as the Shadow. Oh. <laughs> Well, Miss Brooks, after you phoned, I made a full check on the Dvorak game. And what'd you find out, Lieutenant Riley? Your little hunch was right. 
She's playing your boyfriend for a patsy in a little game known as space grabbing. Publicity. I see. She's either pulled or tried to pull this threatening note gag in every city where the circus stopped. She was driving the police nuts till they got wise to her. Yeah. But if I know George, it won't make any difference to him. He's as stubborn as a tray of ice cubes. He keeps saying, but suppose this note is on the level. <laughs> well, well, cheer up, cheer up. Nobody's going to take away Valentine's Dick Tracy button just for looking for a boogeyman who isn't there. Yes, but, Lieutenant, he's no more than a hired man with nothing to do. Nothing but hang around that international pin-up girl and stare at that... that man-wanted sign in her eyes. <laughs> oh, Lieutenant Riley. <laughs> I know it's almost time for your act to go on, Mr. Dvorak. Whatever but... you want to know about little Martha, I can tell you, Mr. Valentine. People think I'm her father. Well, I am her father, confessor, her teacher. The great Leo Dvorak, who taught her everything she knows today. Yes, but about that note... I'm heartsick about Martha. After everything I've done for her, she's thinking of leaving the act and going to Hollywood. The thought is not easy to bear. But, of course, I wish her all good luck. Of course I do. <laughs> I don't know anything about that note, Mr. Valentine. But I'll tell you something. Well? Everything is Marta, Marta, Marta. But does anyone know there's a girl named Risa in the act, too? Yet I go up there every performance. Yes, I'm sure you have a very important place in the act, Risa, oh, but... yes. I help the others build suspense for her big moment. So people will think of nothing else but what would happen to that beautiful body if she fell... Oh, don't talk to me about Martha. Teresa, you were going to tell me something. Yes, Mr. Valentine. I hate her. Yes, Mr. Valentine. I'm the one who catches Martha up there. Yes, Dorian, Leo told me. I have her life in my hands. One little slip, uh, an accident, and no one would know the difference. I tell her that when she makes a fool of me, goes out with other men, she just laughs. She knows I could never hurt her. I love her too much. But, Dorian, you still didn't tell me if you know who might have sent her that letter. Letter? Oh, I'm sorry I know nothing about it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll cue it. George! George, I've been talking to Lieutenant Riley, and I was right. That woman's a phony. This is a publicity stunt. Okay, Brooksy, okay. So I'm playing the fall guy in a publicity stunt. Mm-hmm. But it would make it a lot easier if you'd stop following me around. Oh, George. Oh, all right. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please, for the thrilling highlight of the afternoon. That sensational European act. A breathless two with the law of gravity. And there they are, ladies and gentlemen, 200 feet above your very head, the one and only death-defying Dvorak. First, the beautiful martyr Dvorak herself, spinning twice through the air from father to brother. And ladies and gentlemen, with no net between her and death, He's dropping her. Oh, no, he's still got her with one hand. Hold on to her. Hey, somebody lower the trapeze. Oh, George, I can't look. I was on the trapeze above her. I saw when Dorian reached out to catch her, she deliberately slipped one hand out of his. You don't know what you're oh, saying. crazy. Teresa is right, of course. Martha. That is what I did, exactly. Just one hand, Martha. I might have dropped you. No, darling, darling. You would have let your arm come off before you let me fall. When will you learn to think of the act, the act? All those thousands of people will never stop talking about what they think nearly happened to me. And tomorrow, the newspapers, they will be beautiful. Shall we go, George? Hurry up, Mr. Vorak. 
All I can get is a nervous breakdown. I just love camping out in the lobby of your apartment house, darling. Mm. I suppose you think you're cute giving me the slip tonight. George, why have you got your hand over your eye? Oh, it's nothing. Well, let me see. Okay, nosy, look. Uh-oh. Uh-huh. A black eye, an overgrown mouth. Oh, I can see that, but where did you get it? Well, it seems someone else besides you decided to follow me. Oh? And after I dropped Marta off at the canyon, he caught up with me. Who's he? Oh, I don't know, Angel. I was tripping gaily past a dark alley, and I encountered a king-sized fist. Hmm. Well, I wouldn't put it past Marta to have someone pop you like that, just to keep you interested till the circus leaves town. Well, Brooksy, you'll be happy to know I told Marta I was off the merry-go-round. Well, it took you a week to say uncle, but congratulations. George! George! Uh-oh, the call of the wild. Oh, now don't tell me. Is it fire, flood, or pestilence? Another time? no, George. Oh, no. I found it in my mailbox. Look, Marta, dear, won't your bodyguard black eye get you enough space in the papers tomorrow? What? Oh, George, I was so upset. I did not know. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Got a spare filly mignon in your pocketbook? Okay, what about the notes? Here. Oh, what do you know? So far, you have obeyed instructions. We know there is no circus tomorrow, so be at your house with the $5,000 and be there alone. But, George, I cannot be alone. I'm too frightened. Uh, pardon me for being cynical, but you don't frighten easy. Am I supposed to forget what you did on that trapeze to get another publicity story for your scrapbook? Oh, but I'm so sure something terrible would happen to me. Frankly, Marta, I don't believe a word you've told me. Hallelujah. George, how can you say that? However. Yes, I will stay with you out at the canyon tomorrow. But you just said you didn't believe a word you... I know, you... Brooksy, I know. But you see, I've had one eye closed for me tonight. Well? Well, strangely enough, I'm beginning to see things a lot clearer now with the other one. We'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. Meanwhile, a word about summer car care. If you sometimes find summertime motoring plenty warm, how about your car's engine? Upper cylinder walls, for example, take a terrific beating. Temperatures in there get hotter than a blowtorch. Ordinary motor oil would run away from hot spots, leave upper cylinder walls bare and exposed to wear. But RPM motor oil is tailor-made to guard vital parts. Special compounds in premium quality RPM keep a cooling coat of oil clinging on every inch of your engine, every second. Make RPM stick to the job. RPM also keeps a protective film of oil on parts even when your engine's idle. The oil is on working parts before you st touch the starter. And there's no waiting for oil to pump up, no damaging startup wear. So to keep your engine safe at all times, get compounded RPM motor oil at independent Chevron gas stations or standard stations where they say and mean we'll take better care of your car. Now, back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. Well, George was convinced that Marta Dvorak, glamorous trapeze artiste, hired him as a bodyguard strictly for the sweet uses of a publicity. Then a black eye administered in the darkness by person or persons unknown, strangely enough, opened his eyes to something that still remains to be seen. At any rate, George is back on the job. And he and Marta are alone now in her house on Canyon Road, just outside of town. Look, Marta, stop waving that $5,000 around like cigar coupons. It makes me nervous. Oh, I just thought I would have it ready for those people so there would be no, no unpleasantness. Yeah. How is it that last night you were quaking in your little open-toe sandals and today you're a blind spirit? How can I be afraid of anything when you are so near me? Uh, yeah. But not half so near enough. Now, if we were like this, huh? I could laugh in the face of anyone who came in that door. Anyone. Oh, hello, everybody. Now, isn't this just too cozy? So, you, Miss Bush. Uh-huh. How dare you? Oh, I'm so hard, Mark. Doesn't anyone have a kind word for a poor police lieutenant on his day off? Oh, I thought you always went fishing, Lieutenant Riley. Well, Miss Brooks here persuaded me it would be better sport to get a load of Operation Phony. Miss Brooks, this is your idea of humor. Oh, I know you didn't expect visitors, so I brought along the loveliest picnic basket. Liverwurst, knockwurst, piccalilli. Oh, Martha, you have made me so happy. Leo, uh, who's a this? visitor. I cannot tell you how I felt when you invited me here for today. What? 
Yes, I invited you. I never did. But that is very strange. A young lady called the hotel and left a message. What young lady? Who could have done a thing like... Oh. Uh, we may as well know each other. Mr. Dvorak, this is Lieutenant Ryle. How do you do? How are you? Yes, very happy, Martha. We have not been very close together lately. Oh, please, Leo. I wonder if I brought enough piccalilli for everybody. Piccalilli? What is this, uh, piccalilli, young lady? Why don't you come out and let me show you, Leo? I have to put these things in the refrigerator anyway. Oh, this is wonderful. Oh, I'm always crazy for a quiet day, Luca. Oh, I could kill somebody. And I think I know who. Uh, me too. And Martha, here I am. Dorian, not you too? And Reese? Yes, I met Teresa getting out of a cab when I drove up. And I got her message inviting me to spend the day here. I decided no, to come. No, I will kill Just somebody. Just to see what it is you're up to now. But uh, these people, Martha, we, we were going to be alone. On the phone, that's what the young lady said. Oh, now, there's a young lady who gets around. Are you again making a fool of me, Martha? Please, darling, I'm not one of your scenes. Ah, this fresh country air. Congenial company. Yes, Valentine, I think this is going to be a day to remember. George, I will not go back into that house. Oh, now, Marta, that's not being a charming hostess. It is already evening, and they just sit there. Oh, that should be all right with you. Have you forgotten that note? The safety in numbers, you know. Now, come on, let's get inside. Uh, all right. Hey, hold it. Huh? Didn't you take in your mail today? Of course. Why? Here's a letter in the mailbox. I'm in no mood for letter. Huh? Huh? Yes? Another one of those little love notes. <laughs> Silly, impossible. Yeah, but here it is. But I told you, it is impossible. It cannot be. I did not... You... You didn't what? Never mind. Let me have it. Well, what does it say? It says, you did not live up to the bargain. You invited a house full of people. You know what to expect now. George... George. Oh, look, you don't have to put on that act for my benefit, Marta. We're all troopers now. But I tell you, this is real. You've I have been not... writing these notes to yourself, haven't you? I know I will not make you believe me. But I've got to get away from here, I'm afraid. Hey, wait a minute, Marta. I'm afraid of everybody. Hey, don't be a fool. I've got to get away from here. Okay, okay, if you want to see who can run faster. But this is your last temperamental fling with me. Miss Brooks, look, I pounded the beat for 15 years before I became a lieutenant. My feet hurt. They're killing me. Come on, let's get back to the house. But Lieutenant George and Maude have been away so long, I'm really worried. Yeah, I worried they're smooching somewhere. Oh, maybe George was right and those notes weren't phony. Anything connected with that dame has to be phony. Now, come on, let's get back to the house. Oh, okay. Well, let's take one look up here in the lemon grove. <sighs> all right, all right, but take it easy. Wait till I put the flashlight on. Lieutenant, what? look, over there. Valentine. George. Oh, wait till I have a look at him. Oh. Hello, everybody. Oh, George. I was just thinking of getting up anyway. What happened? I was with Marta, trying to talk some sense into her. Yeah? Suddenly somebody staged an atomic test right in back of me. That's all I know. Hey, where is Marta anyway? Here's your answer. She's right here. <gasps> How is she? I'll tell you in a minute. George. Look, that money scattered all over. Well, Lieutenant, she's dead. Strangled to death. Okay, the holiday's over now. Now you better get ready to answer a few questions. George, oh. you want me to get you something for your head? Yeah, no one, Brooksy. Well, we'll start with you, Leo. You admit you were out of the house when someone ran for Cirque in the Lemon Grove. Yes, I began to worry about my little Martha. I walked everywhere looking for her. She meant so much to me. Oh, admit it, Leo. You knew that without her there would be no act. That's all she ever meant to you. Didn't you happen to be outside too, Risa? What have you got to say? I can afford to be frank. I kept walking and walking, trying to forget how much I hated her. As long as we are all being so honest. Dorian, why do you not tell the lieutenant what you were doing out of the house? Tell him how jealous of Martha you always were. Well, why not? Everyone knows about it. I loved Martha, and I was jealous of every move she made. 
jealous of every moment except when she was flying through the air, her hands reaching for mine, depending on me, of all men. I would never see her hurt. You remember when she said that, Valentine? Yeah, I remember. What about the question, Dorian? Why did you leave the house? Where did you go? Looking for Martha. We didn't have a minute together all day. She was always with Valentine. Oh, fine, fine. Everybody's out for a walk when Mayhem breaks out. You aren't even listening, George. Doesn't any of this interest you? Hmm, Brooksy? What are you doing with your nose in that magazine? Oh, it's the show world. Huh? I've learned some fascinating things from it. Oh, meaning what? Well, for instance, Brooksy and you were right, Lieutenant. Martha did send herself those two notes. Mm-hmm. You mean three notes, don't you? Uh-uh. The third note was the real McCoy, Lieutenant. Yeah? The business. What? And you found that out just looking at Martha's legs in that magazine? Well, in a way, Brooksy. Now, here. Just take a look at these three notes. I'm all eyes. What about them? All addressed to Martha Dvorak. Yeah, Canyon Road 58. Canyon Road 58 and 58 Canyon Road. That's a what? Uh-huh. Now, take a close gander at this third note. The words for it were cut out of this page of the Show World magazine. Well, so oh, that's right. I turn over said page and presto. We have a full-page photograph of Marta herself. Yes, one of the most beautiful she ever took. But what are you trying to say, Mr. Valentine? This magazine was sent to Marta. Knowing her as well as we all do, I doubt that we can imagine her cutting up a picture of herself. Not in a million years. That is right. She kept scrapbooks of the smallest items about herself. She lived on publicity. All right, right. so So what? That's why she was so terrified when she received that third note. It was one she didn't send to herself. Any ideas who did... Uh, ideas? The way I feel? Um, no, Lieutenant, it's, uh, it's all yours from here on in. Stepping aside, George? That roughing up you got must be more serious than I thought. You sure you're all right? Oh, well, uh, yeah, gosh, I, I don't know, Brooksy. I'd, I'd better find out. Now, uh, when I was a kid, every time I fell out of the apple tree, my mother used to say, she used to say, George... There's one sure way of telling if you're still all right in the head. Hey, what is this? Yes, this is no time to hear what your mother used to say. Yeah, Georgie, she'd say, uh, just try to remember the Mother Goose rhymes I taught you. Oh, please, Mr. Valentine, how can you make jokes now? Now, uh, let's see if I can remember. Now, uh, how does that one go again? Which one, darling? Oh, you know, the way, uh, Mary had a little lamb. It's wool. No, no, that's fleece. The fleece was white as, uh... Uh, something or other. And wherever the little lamb would go, Mary would be sure to follow. Well, that's very cute, George, but not quite the original. Oh. Say, if I can't remember a simple nursery rhyme, I must be pretty bad. Hey, wait a minute. I'll try another. Why must we stand here and listen to this man talk and say nothing? That is right. Take it easy, friends. Take it easy. We'll have to wait till the car is through anyway. Go on, Valentine. Go on. I'm willing to wait for you to make sense. Yeah, well, I'll try. Um... Little Miss Muffet sat on a puppet? No. A roffet? No, that's not it. Hey, Tuffet, that's it, Tuffet. Munching? No. Uh, chewing? No, that's not it either. Eating her... Her curds and whey. Curds and whey. Any school child knows that, you fool. Now, let's stop this farce. You seem to forget Martha has been killed tonight. No, Dorian, no one's forgetting. You staged it too well. Oh, no, no, I... You know better than to say that. All right, Valentine. I've been patient up till now. Come on, give. Tell me, Dorian. Do you come from Wisconsin, Brooklyn, or Georgia? Not that that concerns you, but I was born in Switzerland. I've never been in America before this tour. Did all the school kiddies in Switzerland learn about Little Miss Muffet and her curds and whey? Well, I don't know. I I suppose Uh -uh. so. No European kid would know about curds and whey. And I think it'll be a pretty simple matter to prove you were born right here in America. No, I... All right. What of it? I went to school in Switzerland. I pretended to be a foreigner for professional reasons. There's nothing wrong about that. When you were a kid here in America, you learned more than nursery rhymes. When you addressed an envelope, you were taught to put the number of the house before the name of the street. That's something you never forgot. It stuck with you. And that's just what's going to hang you. Let's have that in nice, simple language, Valentine, huh? The kind of jewelry will understand. Okay, Lieutenant. The first two notes, the ones Marta wrote to herself, read Canyon Road 58. The third one she found tonight was written by Dorian, the only one in the troop not European. It read 58 Canyon Road. The number before the name of the street, Lieutenant, American style.
You know, Valentine, in my job, I see a lot of human nature, but this Dorian guy is a breed all his own. You know, it was Marta I couldn't understand. Now I feel sorry for her. I think I know what you mean about Dorian, Lieutenant. He had every chance to kill her when he was up there on the trapeze and get away with it. Mm. Instead, he writes that letter and makes a super production out of it. Jealousy. Jealousy. Had it bad, Lieutenant. Bad enough to sock me in the eye for no other reason but that I was spending so much time with her. Well, how could anyone be jealous of a little thing like that? After all, it was just your job. Uh Now, the truth is, Lieutenant, a simple accident wasn't good enough for Dorian. Marta had to know she was dying and that he was killing her. That's the only way it would satisfy his bruised and battered ego. Uh, As good an explanation as any. You know, it's strange. Marta dreamt of having a story about herself in every newspaper in the country. She certainly tried hard enough. Yeah, Brooksy. And when she finally made it, it was only to let the world know that she'd never be heard of again. If your car's battery has been acting like a mule, temperamental and balky, here's an easy way to cure it. Have your battery serviced at a standard station or independent Chevron gas station. They'll inspect the water level, cables, terminal clamps, and test the battery's condition. And they'll be frank. If it just needs a charge, they'll tell you. If your battery's really on its last legs, they'll explain how a new Atlas battery can save you money. Every Atlas battery has its certified power capacity stamped on the case where you can read it. And you'll find these capacities meet or exceed standards set by the Society of Automotive Engineers. The longer-lasting starting power of Atlas batteries, by the way, is backed by a written warranty honored everywhere by 40,000 Atlas dealers. Independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations are glad to service your battery, proud to offer you an Atlas battery when you need one. That's why they say and mean we'll take better care of your car. Next week, when you tune our way for another adventure of George Valentine, you'll hear... I got here as soon as I could, Brooksy. Edward's still in the club there? Yes, George, and getting very fidgety. All right, all right. Are you sure about that check he's carrying? Of course. I saw the signature, Agnes Eberson. Oh, good. Now go back inside and stick right with friend Daniel. But what are you going to do, George? Oh, that's the surprise, Angel, but hold your hat. Because in just about five minutes, I'm going to start the biggest commotion that nightclub has seen in years. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and Standard stations throughout the West. Let George Do It stars Robert Bailey as George with Francis Robinson as Claire. Wally Mayer appears as Lieutenant Riley. Tonight's story was written by David Victor and Herbert Little Jr. and directed by Don Clark. Also heard in the cast were Gene Bates as Marta, Louis Van Ruten as Leo, Don Diamond as Dorian, Peggy Weber as Rita, and Dick Ryan as the ringmaster. The music is composed and conducted by Eddie Dunstetter. If it's safer, it's better. This is the key to accident prevention in Western living. The 3,000 delegates who will attend the 10th Annual Western Safety Conference in Hollywood from June 16th through June 18th will formulate safer procedures in every phase of public and private life. Their work will make your future safer. They say it's smart to be safe. Take their advice. Your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.